Commerce Bank, one of the fastest growing banks on the East Coast, is open seven days a week and in the evening. One reason Florence Benjamin switched to Commerce. You get here by like seven or eight and they're open to you and like I said, everyone's always friendly, available to you, ready for you. It's all about the customer experience when they walk inside the doors. That is our model. We're talking a lot about customer service today. The good, the bad, the ugly. Well, there's one company that keeps popping up in the good category. It's Commerce Bank. Well, we're joined now by its president, Dennis DeFlorio. Welcome to the program. You know, I couldn't help but noticing in the literature that your commitment at Commerce Bank is to wow the customer and that you even give out wowie awards to employees who are being <laughs> wowie. What are you talking about? <laughs> Well, for us, it's all about service. It's all about service and convenience. And in, in, in our business, in the banking industry, you know, for years, banks have been back on their heels. It's been a, 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 a low growth, low cost, low service operation. And uh, from the get go, uh, we looked uh, to, uh, you know, reverse the trend here and uh, kind of bring humanity back to banking and create a great customer experience around the utility of banking. So Dennis, you have all kinds of great customer-focused innovations. Your store hours, you're open seven days a week, right. sometimes 12 hours a day. You've got these great coin counting machines, the penny arcades. But really, what's the secret to becoming the, a service cult, as you call yourselves? Uh, your, your people, every time you right. walk into a store, you meet with someone with such energy and such enthusiasm yeah. and such knowledge. So what's the connection between brand and culture? Well, that's one of the cool things we do. And i got to tell you, I have one of the coolest jobs in the world because I get letters from customers every day. And um, it's amazing when you read these letters, these customers are passionately pouring their heart out, saying, I love your bank. And it's never about the hours, it's never about the uh, products, it's never about the pricing, it's all about the people. And it's all about what our people do day in, day out to wow our customers with service. And, and that really speaks to the, to the culture of our organization. I mean, this is something that we didn't just wake up someday and you know, wave pixie dust and you know, we're gonna all of a sudden turn into this customer service machine. Uh, we're built from scratch this way. Uh, it's baked into our DNA. So uh, everything that we do centers around the customer and believe me, we have a cult. Uh, it, it's, just, uh, it's just an amazing thing to see uh, and, and to experience. Dennis, cults tend to be, uh, have limited uh, membership. Uh, if I ran a bank, one bank, one branch, I would run it spectacularly. If it right. became 10, I'd run it pretty well and became yeah. 100. Now you've got uh, close to 500 branches. Yeah. At some point, name me one company, maybe you or Polly can, that has made it all the way. It keeps, keeps growing, keeps getting, because right. we'd like you to grow. Yeah. But at some point, you can't, you can't, you, uh, can you? Can you keep that cult going? Oh, absolutely. You know, people said that when we had 10 branches, when we had, you know, 100 branches, when we had 200 branches, 300 branches, and, the, and, the, and particularly in the banking community said, you know, this convenience thing is a cool thing, it's a cute thing, but it'll never last. Uh, we see this going on forever and a day. Uh, one thing about size, it breeds momentum. Uh, and for us, it's about, you know, having enough people on the lunatic fringes, we call it, who really passionately believe that what we're doing is very cool. And we truly believe that we're building a, a company that's very, very special. And with that growth, people see the opportunities and they pour their heart and soul into it. And, you know, someone mentioned earlier uh, about having fun, and that's what we tell our guys, and even when we interview people, is bring your sense of humor to work because we want you to have fun. If you can't wake up in the morning and your feet hit the ground and go, this is cool and I dig what I'm doing, man, life's too short, get out. So, uh, you know, it's, it's all about having fun and creating a great environment and really actively engaging the employees in the business. Dennis, I love that you said you've got one of the coolest jobs out there. It's just, I do. We don't have too many people in the program who just come right out and say that. I think that really <laughs> and, is and great. And particularly the, who are bankers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, bankers typically aren't cool, but... But, you know, really, I, I want to ask you, I mean, you've got a, your call center in New Jersey. I'm originally from New Jersey. I yeah. love that idea. But as you get larger and larger, how can you possibly keep up that kind of cost base? Because as much as you're having fun, which is oh, awesome, man. you're publicly traded, you... Right? You got stockholders to please. Oh, but this is all about building, you know, creating fans, not customers. This is about building brand loyalty. You got to remember in our industry, the banks are looking to cut costs. Okay? They didn't sit around and say, here's a way that we can enhance the brand, or here's a way that we can really surprise and delight our customers by having our customer f service phones answered halfway around the world. Okay? I'm proud to say that, you know, when you go to gethuman.com, we were the only bank to receive an A in the report card there. Uh, that's because our phones are answered by human beings, and those human beings are in, in, in America. 
People appreciate service. The consumer is willing to pay uh, a premium and slightly higher prices to get great service. You know that from your from your everyday experiences. I, I, I see it every day in, in just things that I try to do outside of the banking business. My wife reminds me that not everybody works for me, but I want to go ahead and fix everything because <laughs> they make you crazy. Dennis, so this is really the difference between a service-based company and all the rest, that you look for opportunities to strengthen the bond with the customer as opposed to cut costs. Tell us a little bit about your Penny Arcade innovation. Love, I, love I think that. this is the greatest oh, thing yeah. to do. You know, it, it was so cool. I mean, I mean, you know, banks typically do not uh, take coin. They hate it when you give them coin. It's like you're bothering them and they kind of force the customer to kind of put the coins in these little ridiculous sleeves and roll it and put your name on it and everything there is to know about you. Maybe, maybe you'll get credit for those coins in a day or two or maybe a week or two after they count it. We looked at this and said, you know, we're in the money business. So shouldn't we basically be taking care of that need and that utility? People have jars and jars of coin. What do they do with it? So. Obviously, we went, we went ahead, we found a way to uh, mass uh, uh, produce these machines and get these machines in production in every one of our stores. It's a free service that we provide for customers and non-customers. And to boot, for, you know, when I talk about the fun factor here, beyond the basic utility of providing free coin counting services, we made an experience out of it. We made a fun experience out of it. It's interactive now. There's a screen and a character called Penny Arcade that actually interacts with the customers. One of the things we learned as we spoke to our customers, they never know how much money they have in the jars. So we made a little contest and it was, you know, can you guess how much money's in there? If you can guess within a few bucks, you win a prize. And then we saw the moms and dads holding the kids up to press the buttons for Penny. So then we mm. said, oh, Let's put a kids counter, something to get the kids height so the kids can work the machines. It's amazing. We had somewhere between five and 600,000 customers come in and use these Penny Arcades machines. Each one of them leaving with a smile on their face and a lot of them leaving with prizes and little kids that are happy as they, it, their hearts are content. They want to take mom and dad back to the bank. Jennifer, a ask them what the prize is. Well. What's the prize? What's, What's the, prize? the prize? Oh, uh, it's not free money, yeah. but, it, <laughs> but it's, these hand, it's, it's these handy dandy pens that we give the away. Prize. Things it's like this. Can you believe that? You got to remember the You know, most banks chain their pens down. We we'll, we'll airdrop these guys. You know. <laughs> All right. Well, pens, lollipops, dog biscuits—they still make banking sound fun. So thank you very much, uh, Dennis DeFlorio, the president of Commerce Bank. I know I'm sure a lot of our viewers are thinking. Uh, at least I'm thinking. Why does my bank stay open late?